Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, the Most High, we get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akka. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Oh, Lord. 
Lord. I can hear the messenger saying, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. I'm so thankful. Waking up on the sixth day in expectation, knowing right now that the Most High God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Therefore, come up now. We know to seek him first. The kingdom of the Most High God and all his righteousness, knowing that all things shall be added unto us. After coming out of a two-part teaching of how to study the Bible, I'm talking about principles for interpretation. So now that you've gone through the principles of interpretation, not going by what you think the word means, but actually going by the word, interpreting the word, now we come to a point where you got to understand the law, which is the Torah. And the Torah is the most high God's teachings and instruction. So we're going to teach this morning on understanding the law. Because see, his word is forever. Forever. Can you define forever? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand forever. So when you get an understanding of the Torah, you don't add to his word nor take away from it. And right now we know we have a serious situation going on in the world right now. It's called the coronavirus. Here I am in the state of Colorado and they done closed all the schools down. I was thinking to myself, most I got, you have not had me to say one thing about this coronavirus. He said, because when you're walking in the Torah, I will keep the pestilence away from you. I will keep diseases away from you. I will devour them. Come on now. When you're walking in the Torah, you kind of walk in Psalms chapter 91. I mean the whole entire Torah. When you're walking in the Torah and you're thinking about the coronavirus, oh Lord, you might want to walk in Psalms chapter 37. What you say? When you're walking in the Torah, he says, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. He said, I would keep sickness and diseases away from you. Come on, most high God. I was wondering why, you know, folks just been talking about this coronavirus. But the most high said, well, we ain't said nothing on 5 a.m. prayer about the coronavirus. Hmm. Now, they done shut these schools down in Colorado. That's serious, most high God. He said, but guess what? Hmm. I'm a rewarder to them that diligently seek me. He said, don't you get weary and well do you're going to reap this harvest if you faint not. No weapon, oh Lord, formed against you shall prosper. And even if a tongue shall rise up against you, you shall condemn it. Now set your face like a flint. Come on, most high God. I didn't give you the spirit of fear. Fear is not even in your DNA. Because I know some people right now are saying, oh Lord, Last night when we went to bed in Colorado, the corona number was 43. Now we wake up this morning, they got 49 confirmed cases. The Most High God is saying, I am the Most High God. I go before you and make every crooked place straight. So, don't you worry about it. Here you are worried about tomorrow, and I told you don't even worry about tomorrow. All right, this is the day that the most high God has made, and we're just going to rejoice and be glad in it. He said, <laughs> one thing about this coronavirus is almost like the Torah. Get back to the basics. If you don't just wash your hands, <laughs> you know, that's the instructions that they're giving you. Don't touch your face. Wash your hands. And the Torah is like, let's get back to the basics. What you say? 
Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Let's get back to the basics. I'm talking about understanding the law. Because the Most High God always had an original intent. I don't care what man intended the law to mean to them. They were your interpretation again, man. <laughs> I don't care what man thinks the law means to them. I'm going to need you to go to, back to the basics so they can understand the law. The law is our protection. The law is our direction, which is the Torah. See, Torah is his teachings and instructions. It's not law until you break it. Oh. It's the most high God's teachings and instructions. So therefore, let's get back to the basic. Wash your hands. Mm. <laughs> I love the most high God. He's so awesome. He is so awesome. I'm so glad he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Fear is not even in our DNA. Thank you, most high God. Thank you, most high God. I'm so excited. So when you walk in the Torah, you got a shield of protection around you. Yes. You know, there's a protection around his children. You know, folks be falling off and all these things be happening. And you know, Judah still be standing like, what happened? What happened was we just washed our hands. Wow. So the Most High God is saying, don't get fearful. Don't get fearful. Whatever you do, we're not walking in no fear. That's what we're not going to do. They was like, oh, Lord, they canceled the NBA season. Okay. They canceled March Madness. Okay. Disneyland done shut down. Okay. Y'all might want to get back to the laws of the Most High God. Because he said he would keep some things away from you. Sickness and diseases. He would keep those away from you. Now, see, if you're outside the tour, you might be a little scared right now. Uh-huh. You might be a little scared right now. He ain't give us no spirit of fear. We ain't scared. We ain't never scared. <laughs> we ain't never scared. So I'm thankful right now that I woke up on the sixth day thanking the Most High God for another day. Because he's just awesome like that. So y'all get y'all some. They said you can't find hand sanitizer no more. I said, because you need to get back to the basics, soap and water. <laughs> I mean, come on. Where were we before hand sanitizer? We ain't always had no hand sanitizer now. As soon as you walked in the house from playing outside, the first thing that your mother said when you hit that door, don't you come in my kitchen without washing your hands. It didn't matter how sick the neighborhood was, if you don't wash your hands, and get your hands out your face. <laughs> That's the basics. Oh my gosh. We around here going crazy. If y'all would just do the basics. Oh Lord, y'all know y'all used to go be at work and be, you know, in the bathroom and somebody come in that bathroom, use that bathroom, walk straight out that door. You'd be like, this shit you? This shit just use the bathroom and walk straight out that door. Oh Lord. And you remember their little shoes because you'd be like this, uh-huh. We ain't eat none from your house because you don't even wash your hands when you come out the bathroom. Y'all yeah. know it's the truth. Let's get back to the basics. Wash your hands. <laughs> I love you most high because the Torah is so simple. But y'all be trying to make that thing go hard. It's so simple. He uses the simple things that confound the wise. Yeah. It's so simple that you might miss it. Everything the Most High God does, it comes with instruction. He doesn't do anything without his law. There were some dietary laws that we supposed to follow. We wouldn't have some problems if we would follow the dietary laws. There were some things we supposed to follow as far as hygiene. We wouldn't have the coronavirus if we would follow the hygiene. It's in Leviticus. Read it. <laughs> you want a cure for the coronavirus? Read the whole book of Leviticus. What you say, most I got? Oh, it's written in my word. You're around here trying to find. Let me find a scripture that actually will put, we can put that on the coronavirus. How about you take his law and put it on the coronavirus? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, thank you, most high God. Because when you called them children of Israel out, you was like, I am your protection. I'm your shield and your buckler. Okay. Oh, Lord. Now put that on it. Hallelujah and bless your name. So this morning, we're going back to the basics. For the coronavirus, we're going to wash our hands and not touch our faces. And for the word of the Most High God, we're not going to add to it nor take away from it. You might get sick. <laughs> what you say, Most High God? Some of y'all sick because you done took away from the word. Oh, Most High, you better walk this thing today. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy it. Yeah, some of y'all sick. Because you done walked away from the word or else you done added to his word or you try to take away from it. Not going to work. You got to walk in the volume of the book. That's what Yahushua said. I come in the volume of the book. Oh, Lord. Think not that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Bring it to a greater understanding. Oh, Lord. So now let's get to this word. Understanding the law. Now you done walked in how to study the Bible. You done walked in the, inter the principles of interpretation. Now let's walk in understanding the law. Don't he set you up to walk into his word? In all his word? I'm so excited this morning. You don't wake it up in Colorado and all the schools are closed. Everybody in a panic. Oh, don't panic. <laughs> fear not. I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I gave you a, a remedy for your dis-ease. All those die, <laughs> the diseases, dis-ease. You will be at ease if you knew the word. You will be like sitting back like this. What you say? I know I'm covered. Because I walk in his Torah. It's protection. So, come on now. Everybody going to need a guardrail around them. That's that Torah. That's that Torah. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. That's the Torah. The Most High God's teachings and instructions. Come on in here, Erica, Doreen, April. Come on in here, girl. Come on, queens. Let's stand up. Take a stand on his word. I'm so excited. Y'all been scared about this coronavirus? Tell the truth. You been concerned about the coronavirus? Tell the truth. You know, because a young man kept asking me yesterday. He was like, what should I do? What should I do? I mean, I don't want to panic. I was like, why would you panic? Why would you panic? I mean... Swine flu came through. All these different things have come through. We got some stuff out there that's worse than the coronavirus. Y'all better be worried about the flu talking about some coronavirus. <laughs> you better be worried about tuberculosis. They ain't found no cure for that. We got some serious diseases out there. <laughs> and hey, we done, they done hyped this thing up. What y'all doing, United States of America? You know what I'm saying? Every time they hyping something up, the government is behind. You know they doing something. Let's keep it 100. They keeping our minds off of something else. You better be seeking the most high God and say, what's really going on? Behind the masking of the coronavirus as we put our masks out. What's behind that thing? You better wake up. Because something is going on, but we ain't hearing about it. Because, all oh, you know, everything is a coronavirus. They done made the People magazine. They everywhere. They got books on it now. So what's really going on? You know when you want to hide something from a people, you'll take one thing and just blow that thing up. So every, everything that's on their mind is the coronavirus. 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 Oh, no. Coronavirus. Oh. You know, that's the only thing on their mind. What's really going on, Trump? Tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you the most I got. I love the most high. Because see, one thing about it, honey. The hidden shall be revealed. Yes, yes. The unseen shall be seen. Keep walking in the Torah. It gives sight to the blind. You didn't know that. Oh, keep walking in the Torah. 
Oh, the scales will fall off your eyes. You'll be like this. Boop, there it is. I knew it was something else. Right. So he will not have you ignorant. Oh, Lord. Come on, most high God. You're a bomb this morning. He will not have you ignorant yeah. of Hasatan devices. Oh, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. You think I ain't going to give you the knowledge? Mm. And knowledge is just information. You do know that. And right now, I'm about to give you some understanding because understanding is comprehension. Right. And then you're going to have the application. You're going to apply that thing to your life with some water of the word. The washing of the word of the most high God. As we wash our hands with some soap and water, getting back to the basic. Don't touch your face. <laughs> All right. Thank you, most high God. You, you know, I just love him. So much. He is awesome. Now, let's stop worrying about stuff we don't need to worry about. What you need to worry about is what you don't worry about. And that's talking about walking in that tour and teaching it. Right. Running around here having coronavirus conversation. What about the tour? Well. Oh, yeah. That's what's going to set us free, y'all. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Who Lord. Y'all love to talk about things you ain't got no business talking about, but when we want to talk about this law, what? The law been done away with. Sound like you still in bondage. Huh? The law been done away with. No. Freedom is in the Torah. That's where you get your freedom from. That's your release. That's in the Torah. Oh, Lord, y'all still singing slave songs. Go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. You've been released a long time ago. You have been released. You got to come on to Goshen. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come on to Goshen. Tell myself, go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Let my people go. We gone. <laughs> and y'all still walking in slavery and bondage. We gone. Where you at? Because we out of here. Aren't you glad? It's something about when you wake up to the Torah, you be like this. Oh, Lord, is that what that really mean? Yes, that's what that really mean. Come on in here, Queena. That's what that really means. I'm free. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Now, let's get free and stop acting crazy. All right, now. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. <laughs> Walk in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and you'll kill the coronavirus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Most High God. That's called application. <laughs> Apply my word to your life. The washing, oh, Lord, of the word of the Most High God. Now, let's get some understanding. Oh, Most High, you go ahead. <laughs> I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that are alive right now and the ones that will listen later. Let them know right now you didn't give them a spirit of fear. You gave them the Torah, power, and love, and a sound mind. Ooh, my mind is sound. Come on now. Let them know right now. Fear is not part of your DNA. So guess what? We gonna just walk out of some things this morning. It's called a walkout. We will no longer be ignorant of Hasatan devices. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Give them the information this morning. I'm gonna decrease right now, most high like John said, as you give the increase. Oh Lord, Holy Spirit, your Ruach Hakadosh will lead and guide me into all truth. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. The word says, if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. The word says, ooh, ooh. If two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established. Through the law, the prophets, and the writings. So the method style of study 
It is a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew. The great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah is the most high God's teachings and instructions and 613 principles as well. The creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavins are identified as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yahushua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. All right, now. Job chapter 34, verse 16. If now thou hast understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Today we look to the word understand. Hebrews number 8085. Shema. To hear with attention or interest. Listen to understand language. Shema, hear, listen, and obey, Israel. The Torah testifies. Genesis chapter 11, verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. The prophets proclaim. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 2 And Ezra the priest brought the law Before the congregation Both of men and women And all that could hear with understanding Upon the first day of the seventh month What did Ezra bring? He brought the law Alright now The writings bear witness 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 9 Give therefore thou servant an understanding. Hear an understanding heart to judge thou people. That I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thou so great a people? We have completed the method style of study this morning. Reviewing understand. First we recognize there is a standard set in the Torah. And the most high guys, 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, it's the Torah. The most high guys, teachings, and instructions. Come on now. Collectively, the Tanakh, the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh. Which is the Old Testament's proper title. But it's the only book that Yahushua had in study throughout the New Testament. All right. Five a.m. in prayer. We must seek and search the scriptures for his understanding and not our own. What you say? Five a.m. in prayer. We must seek and understand the scriptures. For his understanding and not our own. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1. Hear ye children the instruction of a father. And attend to know understanding. Shalom alakim. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. This is the undoing of the years of misunderstanding of the scriptures that have led so many of us astray. What you say? Shalom, Allah King. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. This is the undoing of the years of misunderstanding of the scriptures that have led so many of us astray. So now, are you ready? Yes, Lord. For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. 
Are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Now, the most high God just dropped in my spirit. Now, Colorado, your kids are out of school. They should be sitting down right now getting some instructions. Teach them to your children. When you walk along the way, when you rise up, when you lay down. If we had some Torah in us, we would understand that the most high God is taking us to a whole different dimension in him. Now, get your kids. They ain't got to go to school. For 14 days, their assignment need to be 5 a.m. prayer. All right. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5 in its entirety. Okay. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Matthew chapter 5 in its entirety. And it reads, where my sons at? Because you know they out of school. They said, you know, you just stuff start at home. Then spread abroad while you're talking, Dr. J. I know that's right. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Bless all the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Bless are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Most High God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of the Most High God. Yes. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revive you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets. Uh-oh, think not. Uh, persecuted the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thence for good for nothing but to be cast out and be trotted under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that you may be that that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not. Now, see, y'all got caught up in all the blessings. Bless, bless they, bless they, bless, bless, bless. You know, y'all got caught up in the blessing. Yeshua is so smart. He gonna come down and talk about in verse 17. Think not. You know, you're thinking about, wait, did he come to bless us? Hold on. Man. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, thou shall not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. 
But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Waka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. O oh Lord. Therefore, if thou bring thou gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thou brother has an ought against thee, leave there thou gift before the altar, and go thou way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thou gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. What you say? Because you know that's what happened. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. And thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost fightings. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. What he talking about? He remanded back to the Old Testament. Where you heard it at? Oh Lord. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time. Thou shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thou right I offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thou right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saying for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committed adultery. Ooh, Lord. Again, ye have heard that it had been said. By them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thou oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is the most high God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by thou head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Yeshua. You don't even know. Okay. <laughs> but let your conversation be yay, yay, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than they, these cometh of evil. Okay. Ye have heard. Now, how many times you got to remind y'all what do he say? Ye have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek. Turn to him, the other also. Y'all like, I wish I would. And if a man will sue thee at the law and take thy cloak, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. Give to him that axes thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it had been said. Oh my goodness. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sent his reign on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Don't even the publicans do the same? And if you salute 
your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publican so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Oh my goodness. May the Most High God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy words. Understanding the law. Say it again, Dr. J. Understanding the law. 5 a.m. prayer. Today, our focus is understanding the nature of law. I am going to say that again. Understanding the nature of law. What is happening to my life is a result of keeping laws. You obey the most high's laws, things come to you. If you disobey the most high's laws, things move away from you. So our focus today is understanding what? The nature of law. We want to zero in on why law is necessary. Every time you hear the word law in the context of the traditional evangelical Christian doctrine, you become afraid. So I want to show you without a doubt that the Most High does not operate outside of laws. He is the Most High of law. Let's begin with a few statements I wanted to make note of. Say it again. Let's begin with a few statements I wanted to make note of. Number one, the purpose and the passion of the Most High for you and for all mankind is a very simple one. He wanted to establish his heavenly kingdom on earth. And we will keep repeating that here on 5 a.m. prayer forever. The earth was made for mankind. Heaven is the home of the most high. Point number two. A kingdom is not a religion. Say it again, Dr. J. A kingdom is not a religion. A kingdom is a country and countries are built on law. Say it again. A kingdom is a country and countries are built on law. All countries, the kingdom of heaven, is the first country in existence. It's invisible, but it precedes every other nation in existence. It's the first country in existence created by the Most High Himself and heaven operates on laws. If you don't believe me, then explain why Hasatan Lucifer was ejected from heaven. He violated the law. You don't try to be the Most High. Huh? He violated the law. You don't try to be the most high. Every messenger, angel, the Bible says, has a state. The word state here means position. And Hasatan, whose name was Lucifer at that time, was responsible for the department of culture. The Bible talks about Hasatan being the director of music and also the director of sound in heaven. He was in charge of culture. He was responsible for the atmosphere in heaven. And I want to warn those of you who are in the area of culture because culture requires visibility when you are involved in culture. Whether it is dance or music or public speaking or any kind of artistic work. 
you will notice that you are always up front and that you can go and that that can go to your head because people begin to look at you and you begin to hear their response and you get confused. You think it's about you. This is why most of our entertainers keep falling, whether it is in the church or in the circular environment. They keep falling because when you are on the stage, there's a temptation to believe it's all about you. And the most high will pull the rug quickly. So there's law in heaven. Don't violate the laws of position. Nations are built on law. Point number three. Living in a kingdom requires submission to law. What you say? Living in a kingdom requires submission to law. So to live in the kingdom of the most high, you must submit to the law as you do in all countries. Why do you stop at a stop sign? Huh? Why do you stop at a stop sign? That is submission. You hold in your hand perhaps a 150 horsepower engine. You got the power to run that light. But why do you stop? It's called submission. Submission always implies the presence of power. This is why the Most High told the woman to submit to the man. It's a sign that the woman is perhaps more powerful than the man. And the greatest mistake men make is they believe they are more powerful than a woman. If you don't believe me, study history. And see what destroyed most of the leaders of men. They miscalculated the power of a woman. If you don't believe me, ask Adam. Ask Samson. Ask Joseph. She made him run out of his clothes with his clothes off. Submission, therefore, indicates that you have the power to break a law. What you say? Submission, therefore, indicates that you have the power to break a law. The reason why there's brakes in your car is proof that you have the power. The only way for you to live on earth successfully is to use your brakes. Your life must be under control. The Bible calls it self-discipline. Discipline means you have the power to break the law. So all nations operate on law and the citizens must obey, submit to, and they must be under law in order for the country to be orderly. Come on, most high God, teach this thing. Understanding the law. If everybody ran the red light, could you imagine there would be chaos in our country. Thou shalt not steal. It's a law. If everybody walked into your house off the street and started taking your furniture and your food and walking out of the house, there would be chaos. It's called a home invasion. Laws preserve the country. Point. Number four, law is the key to successful living in all nations. Show me a country that is deteriorating and I will show you a country where the citizens are disobeying the law. Stop cursing the law. Law is the greatest gift the most high gave to creation. What keeps planets from colliding? What you say? It's the law. Say it again. What keeps planets from colliding? It's, it is law. What keeps this earth spinning on its axle? It is law. 
What keeps you standing upright? It's the law of gravity. Everything has to do with law. Don't believe that the law of gravity must be followed? Go to a 10-story building and tell gravity, I defy you. Then jump off the building. Gravity will do its job. You will be recalled back to heaven. <laughs> I want to show you in scripture that you never saw before. At least you thought you saw it before. Say it again. I want to show you a scripture that you never saw before. At least you thought you saw it before. It's found in Luke chapter 16. Yahushua makes a statement concerning the premise of law, which means that law will never go away. Don't you ever think that grace came to cancel law. What you say? Don't you ever think that grace came to cancel law. Grace came to to magnify the keeping of law, which we will discuss later on. Luke, verse 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of the Most High God is preached, and every man presses into it. Verse 17. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Hmm. So let's take a look at this slowly. This is the Mashiach speaking concerning the law. He says the law and the prophets were proclaimed up until who? John. Okay, fine. Then John came. What did he bring? He introduced the kingdom and the king. Y'all better come on this morning. So it says, since that time, the good news of the kingdom of the most high is being preached and everyone is forcing their way into it. The kingdom. They're trying to find it. Okay, so we are excited about the kingdom becoming kingdom citizens. We are excited, but you are getting what you call saved. What you say? We are excited, but you are getting what you call saved. This is really about citizenship. You better teach this thing, Holy Ghost. This is really about citizenship. The forefathers of the church got you so excited about being saved by grace. Now, Yahushua knows us very well. He's the king. He says, look, I'm going to bring you into my kingdom. Again, look at that. I'm preaching the good news of the country of the most high again. But he puts forth this statement. He said, it's easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. What you say? This statement he said is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of the pen to drop out of the law. What he is doing, y'all gotta come on this morning. What he is doing, he's balancing quickly. I'm going to give you the kingdom, but you better keep the law. What you say? What he is doing, he's balancing quickly. I'm going to give you the kingdom, 
but you better keep the law. I'm going to give you the kingdom, but you better keep the law. I'm going to give you grace, but you better keep the law. I'm going to give you salvation, but you better keep the law. Look at his words again. He says the good news of the kingdom is being preached. However, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away before one stroke of the pen is moved from the law. In other words, thou still shall not commit adultery. Thou still shall not bear false witness. Thou still shall not work seven days and kill yourself. Rest on the seventh. It is the law. Look at another statement. Law and principles. Everybody write this quickly. It is so important. Law and principles protects products. What you say? Law and principles protects products. When you buy a CD player, a telephone, a refrigerator, or a car, they always send with those products a little booklet. That booklet is a law. The book tells you what to do and what not to do with that product. It tells you how the product function. It tells you how to make sure it functions successfully. It also tells you what they call cautions. Every manual has a page called cautions. Cautions means don't do this. Thou shall not operate this iron near water. Thou shall not put thy finger in the socket with thou put in the iron in the socket. Thou shall not take the iron and put it in the tub while you are in the tub and it's plugged in. In other words, these are the thou shall nots or cautions for that product. But we hate thou shall nots. But it's the thou shall nots that protects us. Don't get me wrong. Every man you also has, thou shalt. Come on, most high God. Thou shalt plug it in. Thou shalt turn it on. Thou shalt select the proper heat settings. So in the owner manual, you have both the thou shalt and the thou shalt nots. What we have missed in our lives, we are trying to live in the kingdom of the Most High so much on grace that we have violated the law of it. The Most High, so I'm going to say that again. We try to live in the kingdom of the Most High so much on grace that we violate the law of it. Laws protects. Law protect you. Law protects me. This is something that parents taught their children about following the laws of a number of years ago. Making sure children grew up to be law-abiding citizens. Chastisement, correction, and punishment is protection. Say it again, Dr. J. Chastisement, correction, and punishment is protection. We don't have enough of that in families anymore. We got parents discussing things with kids, negotiating with teenagers. Are you crazy? My mother had a fantastic forehead. She could hit you from around the corner and you, and you ask who hit me and she's in the kitchen. She knew how to apply reminders that there are laws in this house. And the reason why people break laws in society is because they never kept the law in their homes. Laws protect. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. And we gonna stop right there. We are going to continue this teaching 
tomorrow at noon. Look at Marie. Marie said no. <laughs> We're going to continue this teaching tomorrow at noon. You do not want to miss part two of understanding the law. Oh, Lord, this was so good. Y'all better share this video. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you to keep the law. I love you, love you, love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good. Oh, Lord.